right, welcome back to another uh, CAD tutorial. Um, again, this is uh, going in kind of a sequence order, so if you haven't seen one, two, or three yet, make sure you go back and watch those videos before this one. Um, in this video, what we're going to be going over is object snaps, polar tracking, and object snap tracking, and uh, how they're useful and what we use it for. Uh, more importantly is honestly the O snaps one. Um, and second important is really polar tracking and then object snap tracking is kind of cool, but I don't use it too much, but we'll still go over it either way. Um, so let me just first by putting some stuff into the drawing. So the easiest way to put stuff into the drawing, um, I usually just start with a five by five box. So I'm going to put a five by five square in here using the rectangle command. Now, if you notice, I'm not really going over the rectangle command again anymore as that was gone over in the chapter two drawing lines, rectangles. Uh, circles video. So if you want to know how to do that, again, reference the older videos. Um, but again, rectangle command right here in case you need to know where it's at at least. Um, so I just kind of quickly drew a 5x5 five five box. Now with O snaps, which is this button right down here, basically it allows you to snap to an intersection and perpendicular, a whole long list of stuff. Um, so let's see what that list is. So with the button off or on for that matter, you can click this little down arrow and you can kind of see what's on. And I'm going to go to object snap settings so we can kind of see this in a dialog box so I'm not sitting there hovering over the thing the entire time. Um, so um, I'm going to turn them all off um, and I only kind of leave a few of them on. So usually I use endpoint a lot, center. Um, I do a lot of work with surveying so I have a lot of nodes um, and uh, intersections. So um, looking at the symbols that appear right here, this is the symbol that's going to snap in green when I'm actually reaching one of these points when this command is on. So let's take a look at it and you're going to kind of see in a moment here on how it works. Now if you also notice object snap is currently off, it is not checked, um, and object snap tracking is off as well. So I'm going to go and start just by turning both of those on. So now you'll notice that the button down here is in blue, not in blue, blue. Um, so if it's in blue, it means it's on. So now with this on, if I go to line and I hover over the end, you'll see it snaps or kind of magnets to that corner there, which is the end point, also intersection. And if I approach a midpoint, if you notice it's not turning on, right? So if I click on there and I go to midpoint, and now when I approach the midpoint, we have the midpoint snap. And it kind of quickly magnetizes itself to these points. Um, why this is helpful is because if I want to draw a line from the end point here to the end point here, I can just do so just by clicking on one and clicking on the other. Or maybe I left off my line command right here and I can't get back to it with the simple right click. So I got to go to line and then I hover over and you'll see it. I'm not even close to it. I'm just right there. It'll snap and then I can go and start my line again. Um, so object snaps are very important and I find the easiest way to practice them, practice them is just using them and honestly, um, I just start off with a 5x5 five five or 5x56 five in this case, <laughs> um, you know, just 5x5 five five square and go from there. So, um, but that's just me, whatever works best for you, practice in those other drawings you guys created and just kind of practice snapping to the endpoints or intersections, midpoints, perpendicular points, um, you name it, it's all in there. You can see the whole list right here or even better view of the list right here. Um, object snaps are crucial, probably the second crucial to just navigating around the space. Um, so make sure you master your object snaps and your CAD life will be a bit easier. Now polar tracking is the next thing we're going to go over and uh, as you guys know we went over this already in the drawing lines video. Um, the only difference is, is I'm going to kind of take you a little bit more in depth and we're going to click on the little down arrow next to the polar tracking button which is located right here. Um, again, right here. Okay, so um, let's go to uh, tracking settings. In fact, we'll just click the little down arrow to get there. Uh, there we go. All right. So looking in here, um, first of all, you notice polar tracking is off and you can add additional angles. So if I wanted to go every three degrees, I could create that polar tracking setting um, as well as I can delete it out. Um, also note, you also have some other settings. Um, that you may or may not need relative to the last segment, absolute. So again, if you're trying to turn angles off the last segment, you might want to leave it on relative to last segment, but by default, it's on absolute. So just note these things here. And also note, at the top, it's not only polar tracking. You can skip across to the other guys as well if you need be. 
Uh, but I'm going to leave uh, this lift this really alone, but you should know you can kind of start and add angles. Um, and again, of course, really quick, when you're in the line command, you know polar tracking's on because you're snapping at all the weird degrees. Every 30 to be exact, right? So, um, and again, if you didn't want every 30, you can change it on the fly to every 23. So again, you can kind of change it however you wish and go through it like that. So note, polar tracking, very handy. Um, and again, it's, you know, ortho is great too, but ortho only lets you go orthographically, you know, up, down, left, right, basically. Um, so just note, ortho is a great command as well, and it's right next to polar tracking. And again, we went over both of these in the lines video, also known as chapter two at the end there. Um, check those out if they're of any importance to you. So now let's uh, preview our uh, next command thing here we're going to do, which is going to be called uh, right here, object snap tracking. All right, so now object snap tracking with it on, we're going to hit OK. Now object snap tracking works a little bit interestingly. So basically, you're going to find your snap, and you're going to kind of click and drag. You'll see it, it'll appear as a green line, and you can hold that middle the whole way just by dragging away from it. Same thing from up here. Again, kind of hold, you'll find the snap, and you can kind of go through here. Now also note, look what it just did. So you can also find the intersection of those two points, and it's really tricky and it's really fine movements, but if you can get it right, it'll work great for you. And that's what they call object snap tracking. So basically it's using two snaps to triangulate a point, or even one snap to triangulate a point off of that point, keeping it perfectly parallel and or sorry, perfectly perpendicular to the midpoint in this case. So again, object snap tracking can help you out a lot just by kind of moving fine movements and kind of getting things positioned nicely. Um, I can kind of only relate it to like Photoshop or InDesign and some of the Adobe products and when you're moving some text and how it automatically likes to keep it center and you get those green tracking lines to kind of tell you where you're at. Um, it's kind of cool and I found a lot of uses for it in the past. Um, so give it a try. Um, you'll notice some of the drawing practices we're going to, going to do in the future are going to go over object snap tracking more in detail because you're going to need to use it to kind of find certain points. So again, please like the video if you like it. Also subscribe and click that little notification button that looks like a bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.